Hello, this will be the companion demonstration video of Module 2, where Max talked about intersite connectivity and deployment considerations. In this video, I'm actually going to show you what some of this looks like on a real ACI fabric. So if you recall in Max's lecture, he talked about this notion of the intersite network, and he gave us some basic requirements such as having a larger MTU, supporting OSPF, and tagging on a certain VLAN interface. What I would like to show you is to specifically focus in on one of the links between a spine in my ACI fabric and one of the devices serving the intersite network. What I'll show you is a sample running config of the ISN router that is specific to multi-site. I'll also go into a little bit about QoS from ACI across the ISN. And finally, I'll show you an example of the CloudSec option in MSO with a demonstration. Before I show you the running configuration of the devices serving my intersite network, let me first introduce you to the lab topology that I'll be using in this video and all subsequent videos. So you can see that I've got a two-site setup, site number one on the left, which is represented by Amsterdam, and site number two on the right, which is represented by Barcelona. Up at the top, I've got the two devices in orange that are serving as my intersite network devices. I've got IPN-West on the left, and IPN-East on the right. Those are just the names that I've given those to those devices, but those are my intersite network routers. I should also point out that this does not represent a production grade design. As you can see, I'm missing all kinds of redundancy in terms of IPN devices and only having one spine, etc. But this is how my lab topology is set up and it's sufficient for our needs. Now let's take a deeper look by logging into the CLI of the device called IPN West and have a look at the interface that is directly connected to the spine 1201. If we take a quick look at the configuration of the interfaces that are directly connected to my spines, I want to point out that's Ethernet 1 slash 49 and more importantly interface Ethernet 1 slash 49.4. If we take a look at those interfaces, notice that I've increased the MTU size to 9150. Furthermore, if we look deeper at Ethernet 1 slash 49.4, you can see a few additional configurations that are required. First, that I'm tagging this encapsulation on VLAN 4. It must be VLAN 4. It cannot be any other VLAN. This is because that value is hard-coded in the spine, and our side has to match. You'll notice I have a little bit of QoS going, which I'll go into a little bit more detail later. You can also see that I've got OSPF configured as a point-to-point -point network, and I've put this interface into area zero. Okay, now let's take a quick look at the quality of service settings. So you can see here I'm logged into the APIC that's servicing my site one, and under fabric access policies, under global policies, you'll see an item called QoS class. And you can see here that ACI, out of the box, provides us with six levels of class of service. But we have a problem, because in multi-site, we're going to be crossing the ISN, which is a layer 3 network. And class of service is a marking that's in the outer layer 2 header. So we need to do something to be able to let the ISN know how to handle traffic as it traverses the ISN between sites. So if we switch over to the view of tenant infra under policies protocol, you'll see an item called DSCP class COS translation policy for layer three traffic. This is a mechanism that will exactly solve the problem that I just presented. So in the configuration view, you'll see that this translation is disabled by default. So the first thing that we want to do is enable this. Below that, you'll see all the different mappings that we can make to the six configurable user levels, plus an additional four that are reserved for internal purposes. So in my example, I'm going to mark user level traffic as expedited forwarding. And that's going to be an example where I show traffic from within an EPG needing to talk to something else across an EPG in a different site. And I want to make sure that that traffic gets a certain level of treatment, in this case, expedited forwarding. In addition, I want to actually do some special treatment for control plane traffic. And I'm going to mark this as class of service 7. Now, control plane traffic, if you remember, the spines need to create BGP adjacencies between them in order to share reachability information about the endpoints and things 
within their respective sites. Now I want to mark that with a special marking and then apply quality of service across the ISN to make sure that my control plane traffic is never starved out by other kinds of traffic that are traversing those same links. Let me quickly show you an example that I've set up in order to cement your understanding of this topic. So in my example, I've created an EPG called EPG-AMS. And in the policy configurations of this EPG, I have opted to set the QoS class to level 1. Otherwise, its default always remains unspecified. If we look at the image to the right, that's the DSCP class translation policy that I set up just before. But I set the user level 1 to expedited forwarding. And that maps to a DSCP value of 46. I also opted to mark control plane traffic as CS7 and that maps to a DSCP value of 56. Now those numbers will become important because as traffic leaves the spine and hits the intersite network, we need to be able to match that traffic and tell the intersite network devices to treat that traffic with special priority. If we go back to the view of the running configuration of my intersite router, you may have noticed that under my Ethernet 1/49.4 interface that I had applied a service policy on input traffic called ACI-classification. Now what that means is any packets leaving the spine heading towards this ISN device are going to get this particular service policy. Now let's have a look at what that policy configuration actually looks like on my ISN. So this comes in three parts. The first part is I created a series of class map statements that tries to map my user level one and match a specific DSCP marking. For example, if we look at the first line for user level one, it's telling the system to match any packets with the DSCP value of 46. If you remember in my ACI configuration, I took user level one traffic and made it expedited forwarding, which is equal to 46. If you look further down to the control traffic class map, I'm matching a few DSCP values, but the one I care about there is 56. That is representing the packets that are control plane. So this is the BGP neighbor adjacency between spines that must traverse the intersite network. If we look a little bit further down in the middle, I have a policy map called ACI-classification. And in this particular policy map, I take all of the class maps that I just created and I map them to a given queue in this device. As you can see, the class for control traffic, I've set it to a QoS group of 7. And for user level 1 traffic, I've set it to QoS group 6. If we look down at the very bottom of the configuration, I've created a policy map that will then take this traffic that I've matched and put into queues and give it a certain level of priority. For example, if you look at the very first line, Q number 7, my control plane traffic, I have set this to have priority level of 1, so the highest level of priority. And if you look at the next line down, for Q number 6, I've given that priority level 2. All of the other queues, you can do whatever you like, but the thing that I want to point out here is I'm treating control plane traffic as very special traffic because I don't want that to get starved out by other kinds of general traffic that's traversing these links. And then of course I want any uh, special user traffic, in this case my user level 1, to also have a special kind of treatment. So I've showed you how we're marking input traffic, but what about outbound traffic? Well if we take a quick look at the configuration for system QoS, you can see that I've set this exact same policy to apply to all outbound traffic at the system level. So what that means is whichever interface this particular device uses to send packets on down the line to any remote site will also get this QoS treatment. So now that I've got my config in place, how can I actually check that it's working? If we issue the command show queuing interface of the outbound interface of this intersite network, so this is traffic that's moving across the ISN, we can see that it gives us a listing of all the QoS uh, queues or groups. And if you remember, the groups that I cared about are group 6 and group 7. So let's actually have a look at QoS group 6. QoS group 6 was my user level 1 expedited forwarding, and QoS group 7 was my control plane traffic. 
Now you can see that QoS group 7 actually has some packets going through, and that's good. That's what I expected. Now I haven't yet sent any user level 1 traffic across this interface, but I'll pause that. I'll send some pings. In fact, I'll send exactly four pings from an endpoint in site 1 to an endpoint in site 2 which is then traversing the intersite network, and we should see the QoS group 6 counter go up by 4. Okay, here I've got an endpoint in site number 1 at the address of 192.168.1.11, and he is going to ping another endpoint that exists in site number 2, so across the ISN, at the address of 192.168.3.110. So I'll go ahead and send those four pings. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the queuing statistics on the ISN router. So if we issue the command again of show queuing interface for Ethernet 1 slash 52, and we have a quick look at uh, QoS group number six, which is my user level one expedited forwarding, we can see that there are my four pings were properly marked and properly treated with quality of service across the ISN. So let's now finish up by taking a quick look at the CloudSec example. Note that in this view of multi-site orchestrator, we have already set up the infrastructure links for multi-site to operate. We haven't shown you how to do that yet, but in the very next video, Max will talk about that in lecture and then I'll show that to you in demo. But for right now, just understand that those links have already been set up for us to properly show you CloudSec. So here I am logged into Multisite Orchestrator and you can see that I've got my two sites of Amsterdam and Barcelona. You can see that connectivity is established, but that CloudSec encryption is actually currently disabled. So I've got an endpoint in each of the sites, endpoint 1 at 5.1 and endpoint 2 at 2.1. In the intersite network, I've connected a sniffer so we could actually capture the traffic as it passes the ISN. So let me go ahead and start my ping between the two endpoints. We've got that going. I'll also run TCP dump so that we can actually validate that traffic is actually being received on the other virtual machine. Here I've got the sniffer and I'm capturing the traffic of this and you can see it's in clear text all of the pings going between source and destination. So in my APIC for Amsterdam, under the tenants tab, I need to go to the CloudSec encryption and you can see here that I've already generated a pre-shared key. If we look at the same uh, configuration in Barcelona, again, under the tenant, I've actually configured under CloudSec encryption a pre-shared key as well. Now if I go back to multi-site orchestrator and I go back into the sites and I go back into the configuration of the infrastructure itself, you'll see that I have an option to enable CloudSec encryption. So we'll enable that for Amsterdam and also for Barcelona. We'll go ahead and deploy that so that it's enabled now for both of the sites. Now, of course, if we go back to the dashboard and we have a look at the configuration for these sites, we will see that the CloudSec encryption is now green with a checkbox. Again, I've got my pings still going between my two endpoints. But if we look at the sniffer now, I only see the traffic with the outer IP addresses of the TEPs themselves. I no longer see the traffic that's inside that tunnel because it's now encrypted. So this proves that CloudSec encryption is in fact working. So if I want to disable this, I could go back into MSO, go back into the sites, and simply turn off the checkbox or the option for CloudSec encryption, and I've gone back to clear text traffic. So again, back in my dashboard, just to validate that CloudSec encryption is in fact disabled. Our pings are still going. And if we look back at the sniffer, we can once again see the traffic in clear text. So this ends the demonstration for module number two, and I'll pass back to Max to give you lecture on new topics in module three and beyond. Thank you.